Welcome to the channel everyone. In today's video, we'll be doing a full tutorial of the Fidelity mobile app. I'm gonna do my absolute best to get you guys as comfortable in here as possible, covering all the basics. Everything from creating watch lists to customizing charts to actually placing trades inside of here. So as you might expect, there is a lot of information to cover and this is probably gonna end up being a long video. So please feel free to use those timestamps down below if you guys do need to jump ahead to a specific topic. But jumping right into it, let's first go over the general navigation of this app. Looking down at the very bottom of your screen, you're going to see all of your navigational tabs, and this is how you guys can access the various tools inside of here. Looking down at the bottom there, you can see the main tabs are marked Accounts, Markets, Watchlist, and Transact. The last button there, marked the More button, is going to give you access to all the, the other tools on here, like creating alerts, viewing news, and adjusting the overall app settings within Fidelity. Now, digging into each of these tabs a little bit more in depth, let's first go over the Accounts tab. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the very first one in the list there. From here, you guys will be able to see a breakdown of your account, viewing your current positions, open and working orders, and your overall balance information inside of here. Now, at the moment, you can see I currently have the summary page selected. So right there, you can see my current account value is $98.09, and then right below that is a little chart of my balance history over time. But moving off of that, if we came up here to the Positions tab, the second tab at the top, from this page, I'll be able to see all of my current positions in the account as of right now. So as of right now, all I have is one share of SoFi that's currently trading for $7.56 a share. If I were to come up here to the Balances page, I can see the available cash and buying power in the account right now. So right here it says Available to Trade. If I were to click on that, you can see I've got $190 in margin buying power and $93 in non-margin buying power. If I were to come up here to the Activity page and click on the Orders tab, I would see if I had any working and open orders as of right now. In my case, I don't, but in a little bit, we'll actually place a trade and see what it looks like inside of here. So like I said, the Accounts tab is simply a breakdown of what is going on in your account right now. What positions do I hold? How are those positions doing? And then how much money do I have to spend to buy more stuff in here? Now, moving on from that, let's go to the Markets tab next, the second tab at the bottom. Once we open up this page, this one kind of speaks for itself. It's simply going to give you a breakdown of what is going on in the market right now. So right up there at the top, we can see a little chart of the overall indexes today. We can see the Dow Jones is up 230 points today, the NASDAQ is up 194 points, and the S&P is up 31 points. Looking right below that, we can see bond and CD yields. I doubt many of you guys are ever going to need to see that information, but this is also where we can see that. If we scroll down a little bit further, we can also see the market movers in the market today, the biggest gainers, the biggest losers, and right below that we can see some top news in the market as well. So again, the markets tab is simply to get an idea of what is going on in the market today. What are the indexes doing? What are the biggest movers in the market? And then do I want to read some, some recent news articles that have come out there? Now moving on from that, let's go to the watch list tab next. I'm going to go ahead and click on watch list down here at the very bottom. At the moment, you can see in the upper left-hand corner the current watch list that I'm looking at. In this case, this one's called the Options Watch List. Right below that, we can see all of the current symbols in this watch list. So right there on the left-hand side, you can see Apple, American Airlines, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, and a whole lot others down in this list here. Now looking to the right of each one of those symbols, we can also see what those stocks last traded for, how much they're up or down for the day, and their percent change for the day. If you guys ever want to add additional symbols to this watch list, all you have to do is scroll down to the very bottom and then select add a symbol. From there, we could then find the symbol we want to add. So in my case, let's say I wanted to add Ford. I'm just going to go ahead and type in F here. I'm then going to find it in the list, click on it. And now if I scroll up a little bit, I will see Ford has been added to my watch list right up there at the top. Now, if you guys ever need to delete a symbol from this watch list, the ones that you've already made, all you have to do is click on this little toggle in the upper right hand corner. Go ahead and select that. From here, we also have the ability to edit the name of this watch list. So in my case, let's say I wanted to delete options watch list and instead just name it options watch just for this example. Now that I'm happy with a new name, we'll just hit done. And let's also say I want to delete a couple of these symbols like Discovery Class A shares. I'm going to go ahead and click on that little red circle to the left of it and then say delete. I'm also going to delete 3M from this list. So we'll click on the little red circle, hit delete. And now that I'm happy with this brand new watch list or the edits that I've made, I'm going to go ahead and hit done in the upper right hand corner. So now you can see the name of the watch list has changed as well as those two symbols have been deleted. Now, in order for us to toggle to the different watch lists that we've made or create a brand new one, all we have to do is come up to the upper left hand corner and click on the name of our watch list. So in my case, I'm going to click on options watch here. 
From here, we can see all of the watch lists I currently have in this account. And at the moment, I only have options watch and default watch list. From here, we can see all of the watch lists I currently have in this account. And at the moment, I only have options watch and default watch list. So if I wanted to create a brand new one, all I would have to do is click on create a new watch list here. And in my case, I'm gonna give it the name practice watch list, just for simplicity's sake, practice watch list. Now that we've got the name filled out, all we have to do is start adding some symbols. So come down here and select add symbol and we're gonna add, let's say Facebook here. I'm also gonna add, let's say square. So find that in the list. And we'll also add Twitter for some reason, TWTR. Go ahead and click on it. And now that I'm happy with those three symbols I just added, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit done in the upper right hand corner. So now you can see the brand new watch list we just made named practice watch list. And if I wanted to toggle back to the options watch list, all I have to do is click on the name up here and then select options watch here to toggle back to the other one. So I hope you guys see creating and customizing your watch list in here is actually incredibly easy. Now, moving on from that, let's next say we actually wanted to take a closer look at one of these stocks in this watch list. One thing we could do is simply click on the symbol for the stock we wanted to take a look at. In my case, I'm gonna go ahead and click on Apple up here. And as soon as I do, you can see it takes me to the Apple stock profile page. Looking at the very top of your screen, you're gonna be able to see that you could create an alert for this symbol, you could add it to the watch list, or you could view the option chain for Apple. Looking right below that, we can see the current price for Apple is $170.29, and we can also see it's up $2.63 today, which is a 1.5% move. Right below that, if we hit that big green trade button, we would be placing a trade on the stock, but we're going to ignore that for just a second and take a look at the chart right here. Now, at the moment, this chart is not very detailed, so what we could actually do is either double-click on the chart itself or click on the Advanced Chart button in the lower right-hand corner. In my case, I'm just gonna go ahead and double click on the chart itself, and now you can see an expanded view of the chart get pulled up. From there, once we got the advanced chart pulled up, you guys can toggle around it just like you would move around any other app on your phone. You can just scroll forward and back if you need to, or spread your fingers apart to zoom in, or bring them back together to zoom out. If you guys wanna change the chart type that you're looking at, you can always look at the little toggle menu in the upper right hand corner and go ahead and select that. From there, we get the chart settings menu, and the very first thing we can do is change the overall chart type. In my case, I prefer the candlestick chart with the candles filled in, so I'm going to go ahead and click on candlestick filled up here. I'm also going to scroll down just a little bit and toggle on the extended hours, because I want to see the pre and post market trading as well. Now that we're happy with that, if I go ahead and hit the back button in the upper left hand corner, you can now see I've got a candlestick chart, and if I were to scroll back, I can also see the extended hours trading session, the pre and post market right here. Now finally, before moving off of this chart, if we wanted to add indicators or studies to the chart, all we have to do is bring up that little chart settings menu again. From there, looking in the very center of this little menu, you can see the indicators menu. We're just gonna go ahead and click on that. And then from there, we can actually start to begin adding our studies. And this is gonna be far more limited than some of the other apps that I'm personally used to. But in my case, I'm just gonna add the simple moving averages right there. So we'll go ahead and click on both of them because I want to add both the 50 and the 200. And in my case, it's right now the 20 period moving average and the 50. So I'm going to go ahead and change one of those. Let's go ahead and do it to the 20 day average. I'm going to go ahead and change that to 200 instead of 20. I'm going to go ahead and hit done here. Now that I'm happy with that, I'll go ahead and hit the back button in the upper left. I'll hit back one more time. And now you can see I've got both the 50 period SMA and the 200 period SMA. If you wanted to add another indicator like MACD, we can come back up here to chart settings, go back to the indicators menu, and let's go ahead and toggle on MACD. And I'll actually leave the default settings there. Now that we've got MACD added, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the back button up here, hit back one more time. And now you can also see I've got the lower indicator filled out as MACD. But unfortunately, what you see is what you get with the Fidelity app. There's not a whole lot more customization to these charts or other studies that you guys can add, but hopefully this helps. Now, getting out of this chart menu, let's go ahead and hit the back button. Besides the charting data up there, if we scroll down a little bit, we can also see the quote details for Apple as well. So right there, we can see the current bid and ask as well as the size. We can see the high for the day, the low of the day, the 52-week high and 52-week low, the dividend yield, the dividend payment amount, a whole bunch of stock information about Apple. Down at the bottom, we can even see their revenue breakdown. Like right here, we can see 41% coming from iPhone sales, 27% from services. And we can really see a lot of good info about Apple right here on this stock profile page. 
Now, moving on from that, in order to actually buy and sell stock in this app, it's actually incredibly easy. The simplest way is just hitting that big green trade button right in the center of our screen right here. Now, as soon as I click on that, it's gonna automatically build out an order ticket to place a trade on Apple. Right here, you can see the default symbol in there is the stock that we were just looking at. In this case, Apple is already in there. Right below that, the next thing it's gonna ask us is what action do we wanna take? Do we wanna buy shares? Do we wanna sell shares? Now in this first example, we do wanna place an order to buy some shares. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the toggle marked buy. The next thing it asks us is do we wanna place an order to buy shares or a certain dollar quantity? So remember, in the Fidelity app, you guys can buy fractional shares if you wanted to. So if you wanted to buy, let's say 100 bucks worth, I could always switch that over to dollars, type in 100 here and hit done. And you can see that would buy me approximately 0.587 shares if I wanted to get that. If I instead wanted to buy a specific share quantity, I could always flip this back over to shares and say, I wanna buy, let's say 10 shares of stock and hit done here. You'll now see that the estimated cost for 10 shares of stock will be $1,703.40 at the current price. Now, once you've got the quantity filled out the way that you like it, the next thing it's gonna ask you is what type of order do you wanna place? Right there, you can see the ability to place a market order, which simply means get me those 10 shares immediately, I'll take whatever the current price is, or the ability to set a limit order, which means we are specifying a price. Now, in my case, let's say I only wanted to buy these 10 shares of Apple if it dropped down to, let's say, 150. I'm gonna type in 150 here and hit done. Looking back up at the top of the app, you can see Apple is currently trading for 170.39, so remember, Apple would have to drop over $20 a share before this limit order would fill. Now, finally, if you guys needed to make any more specific trade selections or make this more of an advanced order, you do have the ability to select more trade selections. So just to get an idea of what information is displayed there, let's go ahead and click on that. Really, the only differences between this one and the last one is the other order types available to us, as well as the time and force box now it appears as well. So if you remember from the previous screen, the only two order types available to me were a market order and a limit order. Looking here, if I were to click on the button marked limit order now, you're gonna see there are a lot of other order types available to me. Scrolling through here, you can still see the market order and limit order option, but now I can see stop loss, stop limit, trailing stop dollar, and trailing stop percentage as well. So a lot of other options available to me. Now in this example, I still wanna use a limit order, so I'm gonna scroll back to limit here and hit done. The other main difference between this order ticket and the last one is the ability to set the time and force option. The other order ticket defaults to a day order only, which means if this order does not fill today, go ahead and cancel it. So in my case, if I'm not actually able to buy those 10 shares of Apple today for 150, it's just gonna cancel itself right at market close. Now, if I wanted to change that, I could always click on the word day here, and the first thing I can look at is good until canceled. That simply means if this order does not fill today, if I'm not actually able to buy those shares of Apple for 150 today, try again tomorrow. Doesn't happen tomorrow, try again the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and so on, until it either fills or until I come in here and cancel it. Now, besides the day order and the GTC order, or good until cancel order, you also have fill or kill, immediate or cancel, or on the open. Now, in all honesty, I doubt any of you guys will use fill or kill, immediate or cancel, or on the open, but they are available to you as well. Really, the only ones we're going to focus on are day and GTC. Now, in my case, I am going to leave it as a GTC order, good until canceled. I'm going to go ahead and hit done here. Once I do that, you can see a new little box pops up called conditions. Now, at the moment, it's currently got none in there, which is what I'm going to leave it on. But if I were to click on that, you can also see the box pop up saying do not reduce. Now, that simply means if this company ever pays a dividend, I do not want my limit order reduced by the dividend amount. So, for example, if Apple came out and paid a $1 dividend, if I left this as none, my limit order will be reduced by $1. So my limit order would go from 150 to 149, being reduced by the dividend amount. If I were to instead say do not reduce, my limit order would stay at 150 regardless of any dividends being paid on this stock. Now, since that doesn't make sense in most cases, I am gonna leave it as none here. And now that I'm happy with this, the order ticket looks filled out exactly the way I like it. All we would have to do next is hit the big preview button at the very bottom of our screen. Now, in my case, I don't have enough money in my account to do this, but for you normally, you would see a little confirmation screen just confirming everything looks right, and then you would have to hit send one more time to actually submit the trade. Now, getting out of this for one second here, if we exit out of this order ticket, go back to the stock profile page. If we instead wanted to short a stock, and let's actually move over to a different stock ticker in this next example, we're gonna come up here to the search box in the upper right-hand corner, and for this one, I'm actually gonna pull up Palantir, P-L- TR and find it in the list here. Go ahead and click on it. 
From there, we can now see the Palantir stock profile page pull up and I can see it's currently going for $12.85 right now. Now in this next example, I want to short the stock, basically saying I think the stock is going down from here. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click on that big green trade button, just like before. The next thing I'm gonna do is come down to the action button and instead of hitting buy this time, I'm gonna flip it over to sell to short, right here, sell short. Now that I've got the action filled out, the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and enter the number of shares that I wanna short. In my case, I'm just gonna short one share of stock and go ahead and hit done here. I'm next gonna go ahead and flip this over from a market order to a limit order, just like before. And in this case, I'm only going to short it if it goes up to $13 a share here. So now I got 13 in, we'll go ahead and hit done. We would then just make sure everything looks right. We're about to short one share of Palantir at a limit price of $13, good for the day. If everything looked right, we would simply hit preview order, confirm it, and send the order out there. Now in my case, I don't have $2,000 in the account, which is what's required to actually short stock in Fidelity, so I'd have to just exit out of this. But that is how you guys can buy and sell stock in this platform, super easy. Now moving on from that, but slightly related, let's next go over how you guys could close out open positions, things you already hold in this account. So to do that, let's go ahead and exit out of this, and I'm gonna go back to the accounts tab at the very bottom here. From here, now that we've got the accounts tab pulled up, all we have to do is go to our positions tab at the very top and actually see all of the positions I'm currently holding. In my case, the only thing I currently have is one share of SoFi. So let's say I actually wanted to sell that share of SoFi if it ever went back up to 10 bucks a share. So in order for us to do that, all we have to do is click on the position. So in my case, I'm gonna click on SoFi. From there, a little brief stock profile page pulls up so we can see what SoFi last traded for, $7.56. And right there, you can see I've got one share of stock. Right below that, you can see how much it's declined since I actually bought it. So it's down $1.91 or 20% since I bought this share. Now, since we want to sell the position, not buy more shares, I'm gonna go ahead and click on sell here. You'll then see it takes us to an order ticket just like before. The only thing I need to do now is say that I wanna sell it. So it already defines the action as sell. I only have one share, so I'm gonna put in one share in the quantity box. I believe I said I wanted this to be a limit order, so we'll go ahead and flip this over to limit, and I think I said my limit price was gonna be 10 bucks. If SoFi ever went back up to 10, I wanna sell it for 10 bucks. Now, since this is unlikely to happen today, I'm gonna to flip this over from a day order to good until canceled, saying anytime it hits 10 bucks, please sell my share. And now that I'm happy with all of this, everything looks right, we'll go ahead and hit preview order down below. So now you can see it takes me to that order confirmation screen, just confirming everything we filled out on the previous screen. And if I'm happy with it, I actually wanna submit this trade. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit place order down below. Now you can see here that the order has been confirmed. It has been received. It hasn't been filled yet, but if I go ahead and hit done here and I go back to the accounts tab and specifically go to activity, right up there at the top, we can see my working order right there. So again, if I was on the positions tab before, all I had to do is come over to activity. From here, if you guys needed to edit the order, like let's say I'm not getting filled on this and I wanna drop it down to nine bucks, all I would have to do is click on the order ticket. From there, you have the ability to cancel and replace, which is really edit, or the ability to just outright cancel the order if you change your mind. In my case, I'm gonna go ahead and click on attempt to cancel and replace, and I'm gonna drop this from 10 bucks down to let's say nine bucks a share. And now that I'm happy with that, I'll go ahead and hit attempt to cancel and replace. And again, just confirm it, attempt to cancel. Now that I'm happy with that, we'll go ahead and hit done, back to the activity page. And you can see that the previous trade has been canceled and it's been replaced with an order to sell it at nine bucks. So if you guys couldn't see that, it says status verified cancel, the $10 limit. And now my open order right there is to sell it for nine bucks. Now, if you guys decide to just outright cancel one of these guys, we could just go ahead and click on our open and working order and then click on attempt to cancel. From there, it's just gonna confirm that we do wanna cancel this order. So we'll go ahead and hit yes, since I don't wanna sell the share of SoFi, and I'll hit okay. From there, you can now see that both of them are saying that they're verified cancel, both the $10 limit and the $9 limit. So I'm no longer trying to sell my share of SoFi. Now, moving on from trading stock in here, let's next go over how you guys can buy and sell options in this app. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually pull up the stock that we wanna trade. And in my case, I could either come down here to the watch list page and select one of these stock tickers, or I could come up here to the search box in the upper right-hand corner. And in my case, that's what I'm gonna do. And let's say for this one, we wanna trade the Coinbase options. So just C-O-I-N. From there, we can see Coinbase as the top result. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. From there, we can see Coinbase last traded for $153.65, and it is up $3.80 today. 
Now, in my case, since I do want to trade the Coinbase options, I'm going to come up to the very top right hand corner and click on option chain. Once the option chain opens up, up at the top, we can again see what Coinbase last traded for, and we can see a little bit of info about Coinbase right below. So right there, we can see the current bid and asking price. We can see how many shares have been traded, and then we can also see the implied volatility for Coinbase. If I were to scroll to the left a little bit, we could also see the X dividend date as well as the dividend amount if Coinbase actually did pay a dividend, which they don't, but that's where we could see it. Looking down below that, we can then begin to see all of the options expirations available to us on Coinbase. Now, it might be hard to tell, but all of the options expirations opened up down below. The ones that we're looking at are the ones that are highlighted in blue. For example, April 14th, April 22nd, April 29th, and if I scroll over, there's a whole lot of them. But you'll also see that some of them are like a light blue color. The ones that are in light blue are simply not opened up down below. For example, if I were to minimize all these, it'll be a lot simpler to see. If I scroll down, I can't see the September expiration down here. However, if I were to come back up to the top and select September 16th, and I now scroll back down, I now have the September 16th expiration opened up down here below. Now, in order to simplify this a little bit, let's go back up here to the top, and I'm gonna minimize a whole bunch of these, so I don't see any of them except for the next two expirations available. And actually, open back up April 22nd here. You'll also notice that the weekly options expirations have a little parentheses W next to them. Again, that simply means those are weekly expirations, whereas the ones without the W are the standard monthly contracts. Now, in my case, you can see the only two I should still have opened up are April 14th and April 22nd. Now, for this example, let's say we wanted to trade the April 14th expiration. Right down below, you can see that April 14 is one day from today. So all of these options that I'm about to open up expire in one day from now. Now, looking down the center of the screen, you'll then see all of the available strikes listed out. So 147, 148, 149, going all the way down to 165. Those are the available strikes currently visible. Now, at the moment, I do believe I currently have 10 strikes available. So if I were to scroll back up, I could actually extend that if I wanted to, see more available strikes by clicking on the word strikes up here at the very top, and then expanding that out if I wanted to. In my case, I'm gonna go ahead and select 20 strikes here because I wanna see 20 strikes out of the money. And now down below, you can see my strikes now go from 142 all the way down to 177 and a half, 20 available strikes. At the very top of the screen, you'll also notice some column headers up there telling you what those columns are displaying. As of right now, the far leftmost column is showing the last traded price for that option. The center column is the change for the day, so how much it was up or down for the day. And then finally, the percent change column. Now, besides that, if I were to scroll over, you're going to see there are a lot of other columns inside of this list here, and you guys can scroll left or right to actually see those. Now, in my case, I'm going to leave it as the bid and ask column visible because that's how we're actually going to place a trade inside of this app. Anytime we want to buy or sell an option, all we have to do is either click on the bid or the asking price for that option. So let's say in this very first example, we are bullish on Coinbase. We think Coinbase is going up and we want to buy a call option on it. Looking down here below, we can see a lot of options available to us, a lot of strike prices, but let's say we were looking at the 160 calls, which are about $7 out of the money right now. Looking there, you can see the 160 calls are currently trading for 50 cents by 60 cents. And since I wanna buy it, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the asking price right there. As soon as I click on it, you can see all of that information up there at the top. So the open interest on this contract, the volume traded today, the current implied volatility, 75.95%, and then the current Greeks, Delta Gamma Theta Vega, and then honorable mention of Rho. Right below all of that information, we can then tell the system how many contracts we actually wanted to trade. In my case, I'm just going to say one contract here. Let's just go ahead and type in one, hit done. Now, right below that, the very next thing it's going to ask us is what do we actually want to do with this option? Did we want to buy it or did we want to sell it? In my case, I think Coinbase is going up, so I wanted to buy this call. So I'm going to go ahead and select buy to open here. From there, it's gonna immediately take you to an order ticket, which should look very familiar to what we just did for the stock. Looking there, it's just describing again what we're about to do. We're putting a trade on Coinbase. It's a call or a put, in this case, a call option. And right there, it says we're about to buy to open one of the April 14th, 2022, 160 calls. Right below that, it tells you what that option is currently trading for. Again, 50 cents by 60 cents. It then asks us what order type we want to use. In my case, it currently marks it as a mark order, which I definitely would not recommend for an option contract. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and flip it over to a limit order. Now, for me personally, I always try to get the midpoint first, which in this case would be 55 cents. So I'm gonna go ahead and click in this little price box here and type in 55 cents. Go ahead and hit done. So now if we were happy with that, we would simply hit preview order at the very bottom 
and then just confirm everything looks right in this order ticket. And if it did, we would simply hit place order at the very bottom. Now, in my case, I don't actually want to place this, so I'm backing out of this and exiting out. And let's actually go over that one more time. And instead of using Coinbase, let me go over to Facebook. So looking in the list here, I'm going to go ahead and click on FB right here. From here, the next thing I'm going to do is go to the option chain. From here, we can then see all of the expirations I currently have pulled up. And in my case, I'm going to go a little bit further out in time. And we'll look at the May 20th expiration, which is 37 days from today. So if we go ahead and click on that and we look at all of these strikes listed down below, let's instead say we were bearish on Facebook. We thought it was going to go down. Looking here, if I were to scroll my columns over to the current bid and ask, I could see what these options are currently going for. And in my case, I'm going to look at these 195 puts. Right there, you can see they're currently trading for 550 by 560. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. Just like before, I can then see a little bit more info about that option, the open interest, the volume and whatnot. But in my case, I'm just going to come down to the bottom. I'm going to enter my quantity of one contract. For this one, since I'm bearish, even though it's on the put side, I'm still going to hit buy to open because I'm going to be buying this put option. It's then going to bring me to the order ticket just like before. And again, it's saying I'm about to buy one of the May 20th, 2022, 195 puts. Right there, it tells me the current bid ask is 550 by 555. And again, I would just flip this over to a limit order. I would then specify the price that I wanted to buy it for and then preview it and submit it if I actually wanted to place it. But I think you guys get the idea. Trading options in here is actually incredibly simple. There's nothing too crazy about it. Now, moving on from that, let's next go over how you guys would create a spread inside of this app. So I'm going to go ahead and X out of this order ticket here. And we'll actually continue using Facebook as the example. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Facebook once again. I'm then going to come up here to the option chain. Now that we've got the option chain pulled up, I will mention there are actually a couple different ways to do this. And I'll actually show you both ways. Now, the first way is very similar to how we just did this. So let's say we were looking out at the May 20th expiration again. So 37 days out. And in this example, I wanted to buy a vertical call spread. Now, looking here in the option chain, let's say I was looking at buying the 215 by 225 call spread. So again, I'm going to buy the 215, sell the 225 simultaneously. One way for us to do this is by simply legging into the spread. So in my case, I'm going to click on the 215 call. In this case, it's trading for $12.55. Let's go ahead and click on that. I'm going to enter the quantity as a one. I'm then going to say buy to open. You can then see looking down here below, leg one is just to simply buy to open one of the May 20th 215 calls. But right below that, you can see I can add an additional leg to this trade. Now, in order for us to create the spread, we obviously do need to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on add a leg here. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm then going to select a leg two here so I can actually edit it. And in this case, we're actually going to be selling to open. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to sell to open. I'm then going to say one contract just like before. I'm going to select the same exact expiration, May 20th. I'm then going to select the strike that I wanted to sell, which in my case, I believe I said was 225. So lots of scrolling through this list here. I'm then going to come down here to where it says select an option type, and this one is still going to be a call option. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and minimize leg two. And right there, you can see exactly what I'm about to do. Right there, it says I'm about to buy to open one of the 215 calls while simultaneously selling to open one of the 225 calls. So if you guys are not familiar, that would be called a long vertical call spread or a bull call spread. Right below that, you can see the overall net bid and net ask for this trade if I were to do them simultaneously. So in my case, the current bid ask for this entire vertical spread would be 435 by 455. So right there where it says order type, you can see it does say net debit, which just means we are paying for this spread. Right below that, it says the overall amount that we're about to pay would be $4.55. And for one vertical spread, that would be 455 bucks. Just like anything else, I do have the ability to change these things. Like let's say I thought 455 was too much. I could of course delete some of that out of there and let's just say 450 is what I would be happy to pay. Besides that, I could also change the time and force if I wanted to make it a GTC order or fill to kill, that kind of thing. But once I was actually happy with that, I would simply come down to preview order and then actually place it if I wanted to submit this vertical spread. Now, some of you guys might be thinking that was kind of a long process to create a vertical, and it really was. That took a lot of time. So what I'm going to do is show you the second method next. So let's go ahead and exit out of this, and I'm going to come up here to the search box, and actually, let's take a look at Palantir for this one, PLTR. It's popular for every YouTuber out there. So let's go ahead and click on that. From there, you can then see the Palantir stock profile page, and I'm going to go ahead and click on option chain up in the upper right. 
Now for this example, I'm gonna use the same expiration. I'll go out to May 20th once again. And just like before, I'm gonna be looking at putting on a long vertical call spread. Now, instead of legging into the vertical call spread for this one, what I'm actually gonna do is come up to the top again, and right up there, you're gonna see a little menu that says calls and puts. Now that's actually a strategy selector. So if I click on that, you're gonna see all of the strategies that it will kind of automatically build out for us. So right there, it says calls only, puts only, butterfly, buy right, and there's quite a few, all the way down to vertical, which is actually the one that we're gonna look at for this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and select vertical here. Now I've got that selected, I'll go ahead and hit done in the upper right hand corner. And now that we've got that selected, if I look down here below at the May 20th expiration, you'll notice that the strikes are now merged together. So right here it says 12 by 13, 13 by 14, 14 by 15. Now you don't actually have to put on the spread as just one strike out. Up here at the top, you can see that it actually defaulted to a dollar offset. If you wanted to flip that over up here, you could always click on that and then come over here to the offset and actually change it. Like in my case, if I wanted my vertical spread to be five points wide, I could always hit five down here then hit done. You can now see that each of these strikes are five points wide instead of one point wide. So right here, 11 by 16, 12 by 17, 13 by 18, and so on. So let's say in this one, I actually wanted to put on the, the 10 by 15 vertical call spread. Right there, I can see it's currently going for 261 by 272. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click on that. From there, it actually builds out the same thing as before. Just ask me how many contracts that I actually want to buy and sell. In my case, I'm still just gonna do one contract at a time, and you can see it auto fills the other one. I'm then gonna say again that this is a buy to open because I'm gonna be buying the vertical spread. So go ahead and click on buy to open. This time you can see it did a lot of that work for us. So right there it says automatically I'm buying to open one of the $10 calls while I'm selling to open one of the $15 calls. So a lot less work for this one. Looking down below that, you can still see it is doing it for a net debit, which means I'm paying for this spread, which makes sense when I'm buying a call spread. Right below that, you can see the total amount for this trade would be $2.72, and the order would be good for the day. Now, before moving on, you also have the ability to adjust these things from this ticket. So let's say I changed my mind. I didn't want to buy the 10 by 15. I wanted to buy the 10 by 11. So what I'm going to do is come up here to the short call. Go ahead and click on that one. And I'm going to flip it over from the $15 strike to the, let's say, $11 strike and hit done. So now that I've got that set up, what I'm saying is I wanna to buy to open one of the 10, sell the 11, and now you can see the cost of this trade is quite a bit less. Instead of paying, I think it was like 250 before, now I'm only paying 84 cents for this trade. If I was happy with this, everything looked good, I would simply hit the preview order button down at the very bottom, and then it would just confirm the order ticket. In my case, I don't actually have the ability to trade spreads in here, but this is how you would do it. Now, finally, the very last thing I wanted to show you guys in this app was some of the basic settings in here. So let's go ahead and exit out of this in the top left. And what I wanna do is come over here to the transact page. Now on this transact page, you do have the ability to place trades like we just talked about. You can buy new CDs if you wanted to, but more importantly, this is where you guys can transfer additional funds into your account if you need to. Besides the transact page, if we come over here to the more button, lower right hand corner, you also have the ability to change some basic settings on here. Now I did mention this is where you guys could also access the other tools in here, but we're not gonna talk about them. That would be things like alerts, research, activity and status, but they are available on this page. Now in order to actually access some of the app settings, we'll just come down here and click settings and profile. And then from there, you can actually change a few things about your account if you need to. Now in my case, I actually just wanna change those little icons that are down at the very bottom. Like for me personally, maybe I don't use that transact tab very often and I instead do create a lot of alerts. So what I'm gonna do is come down here to the customize bar and look at tab bar and start page. You go ahead and select that. And what I'm gonna do is find the alerts tab down here, click on it and drag it up above the transact page. And you're gonna see that the transact page gets removed and replaced with the alerts tab. So now when I hit done up here in the upper right hand corner, you can see that transact is now gone at the very bottom there and it's been replaced with alerts. Now for me personally, I wouldn't change the other three. I would keep accounts, markets, and watch list the same, but then you guys can really play with the, uh, the transact page if you need to, because I doubt you guys are gonna go there very often to actually place your trades. But I think that's just about everything we're gonna be covering in today's video. Hopefully you guys feel at least a little bit more comfortable trading on the Fidelity app after this one. But if you guys do still have questions for me or suggestions for future video topics, please leave them down below. But otherwise, we'll go ahead and wrap the video up here. I hope you guys all have an amazing rest of your week and I'll catch you on the next one.